Hey YouTube, it's Gareth from Tech Radar here again, bringing you another phone versus. Now, you know we bring these to you every single week, comparing the top phones on the market, seeing which is best for you. But with the Galaxy S7 coming up, we thought, let's do something a little bit different. Let's take the Galaxy S6 and compare it to something a little bit older, the Galaxy S. Let's find out just how far Samsung has really come in those five years. They're very different phones, so here we are, the retro phone versus. So let's start off with the speed test. Now this is unfair and spoiler alert, the Galaxy S6 is going to win. It's got six times the RAM, it's got eight times the cores in terms of the processor. Both are made by Samsung, the S6 is the Exynos and the Galaxy S has got the Hummingbird, but it's night and day in terms of just how powerful these are. To run you through the speed test we do, we boot each phone from off and then we run through 10 apps, two laps, whichever one can go the fastest is the winner. You can see there, the Galaxy S6, the GT Racing 2 app, it's usually something it can't do. It usually can't hold apps in the background, but this time the app was so underpowered that it can actually hold it there and still start it up quite easily. We're about to hit the end of the test for the Galaxy S6. That's Netflix, take a picture, and we're done. The Galaxy S, we're still on Spotify. This is a very, very bad performance from the Galaxy S, even worse than we thought it might be. So we're into the camera, it's the end of the first lap for the Galaxy S and we're at 7 minutes 13. There we are, it took a very long time to even open the camera and take the shot. So you can really appreciate now, a quick double tap of the home button on the Samsung Galaxy S6 will open a picture and you'll be taking it in under a second and that's a really really big step to come forward compared to how it was 5 years ago. So we're coming to the end of the second lap for the Samsung Galaxy S and you can see the time. It's a very, very slow performance, pretty much as expected. But as you can see as well, there's so little power on the phone that it can't hold any apps in the background. It can't sandbox any apps. So everything has to be reloaded properly, even the camera. So there we go, end of the second lap. And there is a night and day difference in terms of the performance of these phones. If you're looking five years down the line, this phone is now almost six times faster in terms of running the same apps day to day. It's really impressive just to see how far today's flagship phones have really come. I will tell you, it was excruciating to use the Galaxy S today. And while, yeah, it's running apps that are designed for newer phones, it was just so hard to use. You had to wait a few seconds for every app to open. Everything you did just felt like it was going through treacle. The thing is here that people really like this Samsung Galaxy S. I remember reviewing it for the first time and while, yeah, it wasn't the best phone around, it still had a lot of smarts and a lot of really clever things. And this is when Android was just launching and it was still becoming a, a new operating system that rivaled the iPhone. There were things like trying to change the brightness on this phone, changing the settings at all. You actually forgot how to do everything because everything's moved so much with Google that it's now so much more intuitive. And if you've got one of the latest phones and you're really struggling to enjoy them in the full capacity, definitely try Galaxy S and you will really, really appreciate what you've got nowadays. Okay, on to the next part of our retro versus. This is the battery test where we compare the Galaxy S to the Galaxy S6. It's a very simple test. We put both phones up to full brightness, connect them to the same Wi-Fi network and just run a script of websites and see how long they last. In terms of the specs, the Galaxy S actually had a pretty decent 1500 milliamps removable battery compared to the 2500 milliamps on the Galaxy S6. So obviously we're expecting the Galaxy S6 to do better here because it's better optimized, but ultimately it's a bigger screen with more pixels. So let's see how it gets on. One of the issues we actually had with the Galaxy S was it kept trying to run a security script to say that this website isn't good enough because it was just too old to handle half of them. So we actually had an issue there where we had to negate that and just get completely rid of it. So we're an hour in and 60% left. That's pretty good considering it's for a phone that we didn't really use for browsing as much five years ago compared to the 84% of the very current Galaxy S6. That's a pretty good performance. So let's see how it handles for the rest of the test. and that's it, it's dead, hour 45. But we should remember that this phone is five years old, the battery inside it is also five years old, and these things can degrade over time. So while it is a pretty terrible performance, it's not unexpected, but the Galaxy S6 running there with two thirds still remaining, it's still a very good performance. Right, let's get snap happy. We've got the five megapixel camera of the Galaxy S versus the 16 megapixel behemoth of the Galaxy S6. So let's kick off with just a standard landscape, taking a picture of a brightly lit object in the park. 
On the right, you can see the Galaxy S6, and my god, the colors are just so much better. The sharpness, you can see the background. The Galaxy S, oh, you can't even see the background. There's so much light bleeding through. You've got a vague approximation of a plant, but you're not really capturing the whole thing itself. Right, let's go into four times zoom. That's the most that the Galaxy S is capable of. And again, the difference is night and day. On the right hand side, you've got all the lines, you've got the colors, everything looks sharp, even at four time digital zoom. So if you've still got Galaxy S and you are still using it, A, don't do that. B, if you are, don't zoom in. Right, let's get close. So on the Galaxy S6 and the Galaxy S, we both just basically shove them as close to a wall as we can just to see how much detail we can get. And actually, I'm really impressed with the Galaxy S here. Well, yeah, as you can see, the colors aren't quite there. This is a very, very close up picture and it managed to focus really, really well. Again, you're losing the sharpness, you're losing the colors. The Galaxy S6 is clearly the better performer, but for a phone that's this old, well, that is good. Okay, we're going dark now and this is a low light photo. As you can see, again, a lot of difference. and I can't tell you how hard it was to get the Galaxy S to focus on this object. What I had to do in the end was go low light mode, hold it so still for so long, and this was the best I can do. Galaxy S6, literally put it into auto mode, took a picture, one second, and that's what came out. So in terms of improvement over five years, this is massive. It's the fact that low light, we can do loads of really great things, get a sharper picture. That just means more snapping for your buck. Okay, while it might not look like it, I really hate taking selfies. So this is all for you, YouTube. On the left, you can see the Galaxy S with a 0.3 megapixel front facing camera. On the right, the Galaxy S6, it's got five megapixels. And again, you can see there's so much difference. It's brighter, it's clearer. If anything, this is just a statement of how narcissistic we really come. The Galaxy S, you just needed to take the odd picture once in a while. It was kind of a novelty. And now we've got beauty mode, we've got wide angle, we've got so much more ability to take front facing photos. And I'm not sure we really need it, but if you are the sort of person that loves that, clearly Galaxy S6 is much better. The really fun thing about doing this test has just been seeing how far these phones have come. When you review phones every day, you never see the incremental upgrades. You never see how things really start to change over time. And trying a really old phone and seeing how it really struggled with the apps was just amazing. Okay, so we're about to get the Galaxy S7 and while some people might think it's an incremental upgrade, it's still gonna be a big step forward. Every year these phones get better. And that's just really exciting. Even if there's not that much to sort of really shout about in terms of headlines, they'll get faster, they'll get longer lasting battery, the camera will somehow get better, the screen will get sharper. And every time it happens, those things in our pockets just get so much better and that's just so exciting. This test has really just shown that the Galaxy S and the Galaxy S6 share a real DNA. There's, there's a very similar, there's such a similarity there from the start to the finish. And if that just keeps going, that keeps growing, we're gonna have an amazing phone in a few years time that does so much more than you even need it to do but hopefully with a really more emotional, useful connection. So five years ago, the Galaxy S was a great phone and now it's just painful to use. So if you're still using it, please let us know or if it's in a drawer, dig it out, take a few photos and send them in. But just remember, in five years time, your Galaxy S6 or phone you're using today will feel completely alien and really old. So let's look forward to the future and thanks for watching, liking and subscribing. And if you've got any more comments, leave them below.